All right, YouTube, welcome to my latest video, which today is a wild camp on Pendle Hill. I'll be on. I do apologise for me holding the mic here. I've forgotten to bring the blooming dead cat, the wind muffler thing. So, I'm just hoping you can hear me all right. I'm going to be honest, I struggled getting out today. I don't know why. I was all, I was all packed, ready. Just got up in the morning, sat and had my brew, and then I just started mulling it over and getting more and more anxious about coming out. And I was really apprehensive. I could quite easily have not come out today. I've really struggled, but to my credit, I did, I got in the van and I set off, I parked up and I still wasn't sure, but I put my pack on and started walking and uh, here we are. So the plan was to, uh, I parked at Bali, the plan was to come from down there and go straight up the really steep bit it's a direct route which is very steep i've done it before about 10 years ago for like a cb radio set up overnight it nearly killed me i was carrying 24 kilos today i'm carrying a very lightweight 12 kilos so i feel a lot better today although you won't think it. so rather than going up a steep route i've traversed across on a diagonal and uh, we'll uh, we'll see you when we get to the top that's a lot better too isn't it yeah we'll see you when we get to the top Whew. it's quite gusty when i did that walk up there last time 10 years ago with all my massive pack on i was uh, i blacked out halfway up and uh, i woke up almost moments later and then was sick sick again and i thought i've done i've gone, done too much here i'm carrying far too much <sighs> won't you live and learn it was a massive bergen i had on as well big army bergen and it was absolutely rammed to the rafters with gear radio gear batteries cooking gear and it was all heavy stuff as well it was all like bushcrafty stuff it wasn't like lightweight backpacking gear <sighs> Right, what's around this corner? Still got a bit to go yet. So I'm carrying the uh, 3F UL gear Quidian Pro again. Like I say, I'm carrying about 12 kilos. I've got the Van Gogh Banshee with me, 200. Various other bits of kit, which I'll show you when I get to the top. I get set up. But yes, feeling all right. It's feeling good. On the back, very comfy. Yeah, it's all right. There's snow down there. It's there by the wall. Not expecting any tonight. Right, let's crack on.
right up on the tops now. I've shoved the mic down my jumper. I hope you can hear me. Yeah, that was uh, much easier coming up that way. Whew. Quite gusty up here. It did say it was going to be windy. It was right. So I'm just heading up to the trig point now. And we can uh, chill out for a bit. Sunset's about 10 past 5. I'll just wait till people go back down and then I'll uh, look for somewhere to pitch. Probably the same pitch that I used last time, all them years ago, right by the wall. We'll see. There's the trig point coming into view. It's blowing a gale up here. Whew. What a difference when you get up on the top. Just dropping down off the summit and uh, not come too far. The summit's only there. And the wind's just dropped that little bit and I'm, I'm heading over to the wall that I camped by previously. There is some snow up against the wall but I'm hoping just to get out of the wind. So we'll go and check that out and then we'll just keep an eye out for people milling around and then we'll think about setting up. It's only about a uh, quarter to four, something like that. So I'm not expecting many people to be coming up now because it's quite bitter. There have been a few fell runners. I don't know if you can hear me all right. Yeah, I'm just gonna go down to this wall here and then work my way along. Feeling a little bit better now, although it's very cold. I'm just looking forward to getting set up and getting in my sleeping bag. Get some food on. So I've come over the other side of the wall. That's the summit up there. You can see people wandering up. So I've uh, come all the way down there. There's a new shelter down there which I've never seen before. That's new. Well, I'll say it's new. It wasn't here 10 years ago. I nice built it the week after I uh, I left, but uh, no, I've never seen that before. And I come over the stile, I walked on this wall because it's more sheltered on this side. And uh, this is the uh, pitch I'm going to be using. I think nice and flat. Got a little bit of protection from those sort of reeds there. And there. I don't know what it's going to be like with the wind coming down here. It's coming from a westerly southwesterly which is sort of over there so it might come down here but if it was on that side it'd be even worse so this is where i'm going to be looking out that way still a few people about i'm not going to set up just yet Great little shelter that. Oh, that. I'm pretty sure that wasn't there. No, no way. It's 
So a guy named George Fox climbed Pendle Hill in 1652, where he had the vision that inspired the first followers of the worldwide Quaker movement, known as Quakers because they were said to tremble at the word of the Lord. The movement spread swiftly through Britain, Ireland, and the American colonies. And over that side there, there is a spring, like well kind of thing, you just drop down. So if you're a wild camper up here, there is a water source just over that hill. Just drop down there. And there's like a sort of manhole cover with a sort of tankard attached to a chain on it. And there it is. Found it. Oi. Might as well show you now, eh? Try not to break my leg coming down here. Oh, 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 As I went down on the hillside, I found a spring of water and refreshed myself, for I had eaten little and drunk little for several days. Descending after his vision at the summit, George Fox, the Quaker founder, stopped here to quench his thirst as recorded in his journal. Yeah. So there you go. Pegging out. Okay, that. Oh, yes. Right, I'm all set up. Quite happy with the pitch. Um, it is still quite gusty outside, but uh, yeah, it seems so bad here. The sun's just going down behind me there. Um, it's about 20 past five. So yeah, like I say, I'm all set up. Van Gogh Banshee 200. Uh, second time using it. First time was on uh, Helm Crag. Uh, but I've got some new kit. I've got the uh, Alp Kit EZ Sleeper sort of uh, foil backed mat underneath my uh, pad, which is an Alp Kit cloud base, which is inside a British Army bivy bag. Uh, and then inside that, I've got an Alp Kit Sky High 700. Um, it's a four season bag. Uh, it should be really toasty. Um, I didn't, I wasn't sure I should bring the bivy bag or not, but I just thought, just for peace of mind and just to make sure I'm all right. Because uh, there is still snow up here. But uh, yeah, I should be okay in that, but we'll, uh, we'll find out in the morning. There's still one or two people milling around on the summit as I was setting up. But I thought, I'm quite a long way away, I'm behind a wall, so I just kept peering over the wall to make sure they'd gone past. But yeah, I think uh, I think that's the last of them now. Not that we'll see any more, unless you see some crazy campers like me. So I'm just going uh, just, just to start getting some food on now. I'm quite hungry, I've not eaten since lunchtime. Um, I just wanted to get up here and get uh, get set up. So, uh, so yeah, we'll get some food on, we'll bring you back. I've made myself a table. I've seen a few of you have got this kind of thing. But, uh, I didn't have the exact stuff that you use to make them. So I'll just call them my own design. But it works all right, sturdy enough. 
and uh, it'll keep me uh, jet, well it's not a jet bow, it's an Alp kit, brew kit, jackal, it'll keep that off the ground. Wayfarer chicken tikka and rice which will be going straight in at number one because this is the first one I've ever tried. Good job I was in my baby bag. It was all spitting over then. I've got a pouch here that I've made as well. After some uh, sort of reflectix, insulated, bubble wrap y type stuff. But I don't think it's meant for these wayfarer meals, it was for the adventure food ones. I don't know if it's going to fit or not. I'll soon see. Got the vent open at the top. Let the steam out. Don't want any condensation building up. If we can help it. Just fits in at a push. I'll just squash it in. But it's absolutely piping hot that, so in there I can hold on to that while it's still red hot. And it keeps it warm. Right, let's give it a try. I not had my chocolate pudding yet. I'm just waiting for my uh, chicken curry to go down. It was really good, really like that, really liked it. Um, so, I've not been wild camping for long, and I don't profess to be a wild camping expert. Um, I've done one on top of Helm Crag in the Van Gogh Banshee, 200. I've done a hammock camp on um, Wildcat Island um, in the middle of Coniston where they filmed Swallows and Amazons for those of you who remember that um, I kayaked out there in the evening and uh, yeah I put a tarp up and slept in a slept in a hammock no I'll rephrase that I led in a hammock I didn't sleep much and um, so I've done that um, I've done a camp up here in a um, Dutch Army Bivy when I did the CB radio thing that was 10 years I was looking back earlier and it's 10, it might even be 11, 11 10 or 11 years ago can't believe that where has that time gone um, so yeah so this is really my sort of second wild camp on a hill kind of thing um, well third 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 wild camp on a hill um, I seem to remember the Van Gogh Banshee being quite restrictive when I did the Helm Crag Wild Camp. And when I put it up and I sort of put my head in, it didn't it looked a lot bigger than I remember. 
Um, so it, it's not too bad. I mean, my feet are virtually, I'm, a, I'm five foot seven, my feet are virtually touching the bottom. And my head, you can see, is on the end here. Uh, the cloud base mat, I think I'm going to have problems with that in the night. It's comfy enough, but I don't know about all night. And I, when, I, so when I'm leaning, when I'm on my side like this, my hip is pushing down on the mat and I can feel a cold spot. Um, so I don't think it's going to be ideal for side sleeping. I'm going to have to either sleep on my back or on my front. Uh, the sleeping bag is really warm. I've always liked the sleeping bag. And the sort of bivy bag just gives me that extra bit of protection, but it is quite bulky. Uh, it's 500 grams. Uh, I have seen another one. It's like a, it's like an emergency shelter, um, and it weighs hardly anything, which I think would be perfect for this kind of thing. Um, not for bivying out just under the stars, but when you're in the tent and you're putting the bivy over the sleeping bag just for another layer, then and it packs down to like that sort of size, whereas this is this sort of size. And like say 500 grams so um i might look into that it's about 56 quid i think so it's not cheap but might be worth uh, might be worth looking into i'm glad i came out i'm still i'm still feeling a little bit apprehensive i don't know why it, i've almost got the is this for me kind of thing but i think it's just because i've not been out that often if i went out on a regular basis i'd get into more of a routine of where to put things and where to how to set things up and uh, i think it'd be a lot better i mean now i'm all right i'm in my sleeping bag i've had something to eat and i'm about to have my chocolate pudding so uh yeah once i've had that i'll be i'll be warmed up i'll be warming up the sleeping bag I've got my down jacket on and i've got everything sort of laid out where i want it so i know where it is so uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how how, how good a night we have, and uh, we'll uh, see what it's like in the morning. Right, well I'm going to call it a day, and we'll uh, see in the morning, unless something happens in the night. I don't think it will though. The wind's not too bad. Be all right. Be fine. Right. See you in the morning. Morning YouTube. It's pretty foggy up here this morning. It's about half seven. I didn't sleep very well. Um, I think it's a massive, massive learning curve that for me. The the sleeping mat just wasn't adequate. It wasn't it was all right. There was no cold spots as such because I had it on the um, foil backed uh, EZ sleeper holding mat so there's no cold spots um, and I had the sleeping bag inside the bivy bag but the sleeping bag is quite damp this morning it dropped down to about minus um, no it didn't drop down to minus it dropped down to 1.7 degrees outside um, I, I got out twice to the toilet um, and it was quite fresh but I just wasn't comfy at all my back is absolutely killing me I woke up with headache no, didn't sleep very well. It started raining. Well, the wind picked up about half nine. Um, then it started raining, and that lasted about an hour, which was fine. I just led there, just listening to it. What? Uh, no, <laughs> that wasn't pleasant at all. It's kind of put a down on the whole thing, really. Um, so I need to look into that. Uh, maybe I need to look at a better, a better sleep pad. That's I, th I think getting you good night's sleep is paramount. When you're wild camping, um, so I'm going to start looking for a better sleep pad and uh, and give it another go. 
So I'm just packing up now. I'm not going to bother with any breakfast. Uh, I'm just going to pack up, get back down to the car, um, and just get home. And, uh, just get a brew and a nice bowl of porridge in the comfort of my home. <laughs> and then give, and try it all again. But uh, yeah, definitely need to find a, another sleep pad. Right, we'll pack up now and then we'll uh, we'll head back down. Right, that's me all packed away. You know the drill, leave no trace. Just a bit of flattened grass. Right, all packed up. Time to uh, head back down. Have a view at the trig point this morning. It's all very claggy. Let's do it again, good measure. Right, back down. Back down the way we can. in the valley now, back where I'm heading, ah shut up, so uh, yeah, bit of a funny one that, like I say, didn't have a good sleep, which didn't make it very pleasant, um, Banshee, it's a great tent, but it's, very restrictive. If it had been lashing it down, I'd have been confined to the small vestibule to do my cooking, which I did for parts, but uh, it wasn't ideal. And getting in and out is a bit of a contorting act. And uh, if you've got all your gear as well, it's a bit of a struggle. So yeah, I'm not sure. I'm still liking the uh, Quidian rucksack. Yeah, still like it. This time, like I say I was carrying 12 kilograms, but still comfy on the back. And uh, I got everything I needed. It's a little bit tight, but I think I can shave some bulk off in various areas, especially the uh, bivy bag. I'm gonna ditch that and get a smaller more lightweight one just for in the tent but yeah other than that it's been really good so i think i'm going to wrap that up there i don't think this is going to be a particularly good video because i've not done a great deal of filming around the tent or anything like that um i just wasn't in the right frame of mind so if you did like it then please do give me a thumbs up and if you're new to the channel, please uh, consider subscribing and uh, don't forget to click that bell icon so you don't miss out on my next video. Where will that be? What will that be? I don't know. I'll have to have a think about that. But yeah, I appreciate your support as always. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.